It's the International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. We're looking at World Cup 2026 qualifying in the Asian region. This is round one, the preliminary round. Our fifth pairing is Cambodia versus Pakistan. Here we go. It's the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada, Series 21. I'm Kevin, and uh, we have just started a massive set of series looking at uh, World Cup 2026 qualifying. Series 21 will cover three rounds of qualifying for the Asian region, or the AFC, and this is the uh, fifth of 10 media casts covering the preliminary round of qualifying. So these are the bottom 20 teams in the AFC region playing home and away, and the 10 winners advance to the, uh, to the second round. So again, this is that five of 10 covering Cambodia versus Pakistan. Yeah, and uh, we've been wanting to cover weaker countries in world soccer because they get little attention, really. Most media cast focus on the big teams, and these small teams uh, get, uh, you know, just kind of pushed to the wayside. But they do have an interesting history uh, in themselves. However, some of them uh, never get on the radar because they're often knocked out in the early rounds. In addition, they're uh, often hard to separate. And in the minds of even, even ardent soccer fans, they just come into a nebulous category of weak teams. Uh, part of the goal here is to make them more distinct. Uh, throughout, we'll be mentioning the teams they beat or the teams that usually beat them. And we are naming these teams on purpose so that fans can little by little build an impression of how strong each team is relative to those around them. At this point, we usually give some information about our past, present, and future media cast. However, we don't want too much information in our introduction here. So we've made a separate media cast that covers what we've been doing recently and what we plan to cover over the next nine months. It'll be published around October 15th and can also be found at the address that YouTube watchers can see on the graphic. And we'll also give a link to that in the show notes. Okay, on with the show here. We will cover the uh, fifth of the 10 preliminary pairings here. And for each pairing or each uh, team, we will have three sections. So uh, part one, we uh, introduce a bit about the two countries competing, uh, their location and population. And part two is the main part of the media cast. We do an overview of each team's history and their recent form. And this series features a deep dive into each team's history in World Cup qualifying. Uh, the Asian region is uh, further divided into what we call localities, and they play a big role. So part two, uh, the, uh, when we talk about the history, we do touch on this often neglected aspect of the team's history. Uh, part three will be a comparison of the two teams in terms of ranking, head-to-head -head record, and odds. And we'll end with a discussion of the prospects and our prediction for this round. Do we think Cambodia will go through or Pakistan? Okay, let's jump into it, and we'll learn a little bit about the countries uh, first. So uh, our first team is Cambodia. Cambodia was known as the Khmer Republic from 1970 to 75, and actually that was their strongest period. Uh, in terms of geography, uh, Cambodia shares a border with Thailand uh, to its west and north, and then with Laos to its northeast, and with Vietnam to its east. And in the south, it faces the uh, Gulf of Thailand. Uh, the population is 16.9 million, and that is 73rd in the world and 26th in Asia. Pakistan. Uh, Pakistan has a thousand kilometer coastline along the Arabian Sea to the south, and it borders Afghanistan and Iran to the west, and India to the east, and the People's Republic of China in the far northeast. 
Uh, Pakistan is a very large country with 204 million people. It's the fifth largest country in the world and the fourth largest in Asia. So Pakistan, um, a lot bigger than uh, Cambodia. Okay, but Cambodia is the part one team here. And we begin just with an overview of their participation and strength. Cambodia first entered the World Cup in 1998. Apart from the 2006 edition, which they didn't enter, their participation has been consistent. However, the Asian Cup history is much longer, having entered its first edition in 1956. Uh, participation was very inconsistent though. They missed the next two editions, but they returned for two editions in 1962, sorry, 1968 and 1972 under the name of the Khmer Republic. A long absence after that saw them returning only in 2000. They missed the 2004 uh, edition, but from 2006 their participation has been consistent. Uh, despite their overall consistent record, they did enter the first AFF Cup, that is their local cup, and um, uh, the competition which takes place every two years, uh, they have never missed uh, from its start in 1996. Uh, in terms of their strength, Cambodia is a fifth tier team. A fifth-tier team is characterized by losing most games except to other feeble nations and usually being knocked out at the first stage of competition while offering no threat to other teams uh, except perhaps other fifth-tier teams. Uh, Cambodia's, or I should say Khmer Republic's 1972 Asian Cup campaign was exceptional and included several wins over stronger teams but they otherwise have rarely taken points off third or even fourth tier teams, especially in recent times. While Cambodia is consistent only over the weakest of the fifth tier teams, enough to get them through the last two World Cup preliminary rounds, for example, they lose fairly consistently to stronger fifth tier teams like Nepal and Bangladesh. Okay, uh, let us move on to our look at the World Cup history. And in World Cup play, Cambodia fell at the first round of uh, qualifying every time until 2018, when they passed the preliminary round, uh, achieving that same result in 2022. They earned a few respectable results along the way in the form of home draws against fourth tier teams. Um, Indonesia is the strongest among them. Uh, they have suffered double-digit losses to some first and second tier teams in the early years and heavy losses to uh, fourth tier teams, Yemen and Maldives. And we had talked about their participation from 1998 uh, there. Um, so those were quick exits from the cup. Uh, let's move on to our overview of the Regional Cup. We'll actually revisit the World Cup in the deep dive. Um, their record in the Asian tournament consists of a win over Guam in 2006 and wins over uh, um, fifth-tier teams in the qualifying stages of each of the next three tournaments. But they lost all other games, uh, even to other fifth-tier teams like Nepal and Bangladesh. They moved down to the Challenge Cup from 2006 to 2014. Uh, that's a tournament designed for uh, weaker teams in lieu of the Asian Cup because the weaker teams really couldn't compete uh, with the bigger teams. Um, and uh, in that, uh, in that uh, competition, they uh, reached the cup in 2006, but were knocked out at the group stage. And uh, even though they entered the four editions after, they never qualified for any of them. Uh, all teams, including them, returned to the Asia-wide competition in 2019. And there, uh, well, we actually will begin our look at uh, the 2019 competition in the recent game section. So we can save that for then. Let's take a look at their local cup. Um, they are part of the uh, AFF, and that's the uh, ASEAN 
uh, Football Federation, ASEAN itself is an acronym standing for the Association of Southeast Asian Nations. So uh, Cambodia uh, is uh, together with uh, Southeast Asian nations. The strongest uh, teams in the group are third tier, and so it ranges from third to fifth tier teams. And in their tournament, uh, they do well to qualify, which uh, would require beating other fifth-tier teams in the locality. Uh, they compete evenly with the Philippines and Laos, and are generally stronger than Brunei and East Timor. Uh, they failed to overcome these teams and did not qualify three times in a row from 2010 to 2014, but they have reached the last four editions. And when they make the tournament, uh, they're no match for the likes of Vietnam, who crushed them three times in a row, and others of that strength like Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, to a lesser degree, Singapore. Okay, let's go to the uh, deep dive for the World Cup. So uh, their first entry into the World Cup in 1998 saw them earn a single point with a home draw against Indonesia who they finished six points behind in last place. It was a good result considering Indonesia had beaten them 8-0 uh, in the first game of the campaign. Uh, they also lost 7-0 to Yemen uh, while losing to them only 1-0 at home. So somewhat competitive there, but uh, uh, just one point. Uh, 2002 was quite similar in that they opened the campaign with a 6 nothing loss to Maldives, but earned their only point by tying them in the home leg. Um, Cambodia did not enter the uh, next competition in 2006, but returned in 2010 to face Turkmenistan in a first-round knockout. Again, they kept it close at home, losing only one nothing there, but a 4-1 loss in the away leg saw them knocked out of the competition at the first step. In 2014, they faced competition more at their own level in the form of Laos. They won the first leg at home, but lost the away leg, although it was by the same scoreline. So actually the matter went to extra time, where Laos scored two goals to take the advancing spot. Uh, in 2018, they were among the uh, 12 teams in the region required to play in the uh, preliminary round, so the 12 lowest teams, and they were paired there with uh, Macau. Um, they did best Macau, uh, beating them once and tying them once, and moved on to the next round. However, that was uh, well out of their depth, and they lost all games in the subsequent round. They might have earned some... Uh, points off of Afghanistan, but Afghanistan proved uh, too much for them. Um, and in 2022, they were, uh, oh, okay, 2022, we are going to look at uh, in the recent section, so we won't uh, cover that here. And that actually does bring us to the recent section for Macau. So it starts with the Asian Cup in 2019. So um, a good performance at the lower level in this campaign. Uh, 2018 World uh, Cup qualifying made up the first two rounds of qualification. So as we saw, they bested Macau in the first round, but uh, lost all games in the second, even to the fourth place finisher, uh, Afghanistan. So uh, because they finished last in the group, they had to uh, undergo more kind of playoff rounds to try to reach the final round. Asia uh, tends to offer weak teams a few opportunities to, uh, to do well. And uh, they faced Chinese Taipei uh, in that uh, playoff round and, and bested them. So that did get them to round three of three. Uh, as expected there, uh, they were out of their league once again. They were actually paired with or, or in a group with Afghanistan. And this time they uh, beat Afghanistan at home. And they were competitive away, losing uh, just 2-1 in the away leg. Uh, they did finish behind uh, Afghanistan again, but a bit more of a competitive campaign here. Uh, the top two teams that went through were Jordan and Vietnam, and they uh, obviously proved way too strong. Uh, 
uh, too strong. So not a bad campaign there. The next campaign was the uh, local cup, the uh, uh, ASEAN Cup. So uh, that's played among the South Asian teams, and uh, sorry, Southeast Asian teams. And there, uh, they did manage. Uh, they did prove stronger than Laos, beating them uh, three nothing. But were no match for the third tier teams in the region: Malaysia, Indonesia, and Vietnam. So they finished fourth of five in the group ahead of Laos. World Cup 2022 is their next campaign, and that began with a uh, win over Pakistan, who they face here. So actually a win uh, in the preliminary round, meaning that they uh, won both games uh, uh, against uh, Pakistan, 2 nothing and 2-1, to uh, get them to the semi-final round once again. And they started that round well with a bit of a coup, uh, tying um, Hong Kong, uh, at home, uh, but that was it in terms of points. That was the only point they earned. And Iran, Iraq, Bahrain, and uh, 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 all, all proved too strong, beating them in both legs. And they finished behind Hong Kong in fifth place in the group. So again, a good uh, start there. And they really wouldn't be expected to uh, beat any of these teams. So even the, the point against Hong Kong, uh, was a pretty good showing. Next cup is their local cup in uh, in the Southeast Asian region. There is a qualifying round for that cup, but it's just played among, I think, the bottom two teams. So they received a bye uh, from that round and uh, got to the group stage. Uh, the group stage saw them uh, win over Philippines and win over Brunei. Uh, but again, losing to the third tier teams, Indonesia and Thailand. But they did do well to finish ahead of the Philippines there, third out of five in the group. Uh, finally, the Asian Cup uh, in 2023. And the first two rounds of that are 2018, oh sorry, 2022 World Cup qualifying, which we've already seen. They beat Pakistan twice, tied Hong Kong in their opener, uh, but lost all other games. I didn't say that included 14 nothing and 10 nothing losses to Iran. So it kind of shows that, uh, you know, they are relatively uh, weak uh, there. So uh, as in 2019, they finished bottom of the group, so didn't receive uh, uh, advancement to round three of three. But they had a chance to get there by playing another playoff. And once again, they won the playoff. And this time it was over Guam. They won both legs over Guam. So uh, they did get to round three of three. And once again, they met Afghanistan. And once again, they tied them. Uh, tied them. So they seem to be growing a little bit stronger, uh, having lost to Afghanistan uh, earlier on, but now capable of tying them. They also met Hong Kong, who they tied before, but uh, not this time. Uh, and they lost to Hong Kong and to India, uh, finishing last in the group again. But uh, still, you know, reasonably competitive at the lower levels there. Okay, that brings us to the end of uh, Cambodia, and we move on to look at Pakistan, beginning with an overview of their participation and strength. Pakistan first entered the World Cup in 1990 and have participated consistently ever since. They have a much longer history in the Asian Cup, first entering in its first edition in 1956, but they actually withdrew uh, from that. Their attendance uh, was actually patchy until 1984, joining just two of the six tournaments until 1984. But from that time, they've participated consistently, uh, except for a withdrawal from the Solidarity Cup, which we'll talk about uh, a bit later. Uh, Pakistan's local group is the South Asian Football Federation, or SAF. Uh, which has uh, tournaments every two years, and that has been happening from 1993. And their attendance has been quite consistent. Um, 
in that tournament. Uh, in 2015, they uh, didn't participate, and also in 2021, they were suspended. Uh, otherwise, they've taken part in all editions. In terms of strength, Pakistan is a fifth-tier team. Uh, this is the lowest level, and the fifth tier is defined uh, by teams that almost always lose, uh, except uh, among other fifth-tier teams. So. Uh, Pakistan actually seems to be at the weaker end of the fifth tier, uh, at least in major competitions, because uh, they lose, uh, they tend to lose even to fifth tier teams. So uh, in minor tournaments, though, like the AFC uh, Challenge Cup and their local SAF Cup, uh, they seem to be a bit more competitive among fifth tier teams. However, when faced with fourth tier teams or higher, they invariably lose. And even the few results they have learned, uh, have earned at the game level against fourth tier teams uh, have been draws in the second leg of knockout rounds where the stronger team uh, uh, beat them in the first round. So the outcome was already quite clear. Uh, Iraq in 2010, uh, was their most glorious uh, tie against a second tier team, but uh, we'll see that they lost heavily to Iraq in the first leg. So perhaps Iraq didn't even send their best players for the second leg because they were uh, pretty guaranteed to win. Okay, let's uh, move to the World Cup and an overview of Pakistan's history in it. Uh, in World Cup qualification, they uh, they are the very definition of a fifth-tier team, always finishing last uh, in the first group round, if it's a group round. And when there is a preliminary round, they fall at that hurdle. Uh, that they usually lose even to very weak teams, especially in those preliminaries, uh, puts them, as we said, at the, at the lower end of the fifth tier. They do have a couple of ties with such teams, but it's never enough to see them advance. They've also earned draws with stronger teams, as we noted, uh, but it tends to be in the second leg when the matter is already decided. We'll take a look at the specifics of that uh, in our deep dive. Uh, but let's move on with our overview and an overview of the regional cup or the Asian cup. Uh, actually, the Asian cup history is a bit brighter 1960 was the best performance in qualifying by far, as they took points from all teams in the group. However, they still finished third or fourth there, two places short of the single advancing spot. Their next two tournaments were in 1968 and 1984, and they took points uh, in both of them and finished second last in each case. However, from 1988 to 2000, they lost all games and finished last in their groups. Uh, thus, by the time the AFC Challenge Cup was created uh, in 2006 for weak teams, uh, kind of in lieu of the Asian Cup, which was too much for the weak teams, uh, Pakistan seemed a good candidate for that competition. Unfortunately, even that level proved too strong for them. Uh, they only successfully qualified in 2006 when entry was automatic and the competition uh, really was limited to the weaker teams. Um, they were somewhat competitive in qualifying campaigns over the next two cups, but uh, the quality of the teams uh, basically fourth and sometimes even third tier teams uh, joined the competition. Uh, so Pakistan grew ever further from the cup um, as, as time went on. Uh, all teams in the region returned to a newly formatted Asian Cup in 2019. And uh, uh, we're going to take a, a look at that uh, when we get to the uh, recent competition. So uh, we will just uh, move on here. Um, to the local cup, so the South Asian Football Federation Cup. Uh, Pakistan is a member of SAF, and SAF is the weakest local, uh, locality in Asia. Uh, it does offer Pakistan and the other teams competition at their own level, uh, but fourth tier India uh, is the strongest team in the group. 
Um, so uh, just fourth and fifth tier teams really in the SAF region. Uh, Pakistan did better in the past in this competition, advancing from the group stage in four of the first six cups from 1993 to 2005. Hosting two of those helped, but they never got past the semi-finals. Uh, as time went, Nepal and Maldives grew in strength, leaving Pakistan struggling with Bangladesh and Sri Lanka near the bottom of the table. They dropped out from the competition in 2015, but returned in 2018 uh, with their first semi-final uh, appearance since 2005. However, that, uh, that was followed by a FIFA suspension for the 2021 edition, and in the 2023 edition, they went back to their regular uh, uh, regular form being knocked out in the group stage. Okay, it's time for the deep dive into their World Cup history, so we'll see the specifics uh, of that. Their first World Cup campaign in 1990 was a group stage. If they had any chance of, of earning points, it would have been against South Yemen. But South Yemen dropped out of the competition, so Pakistan was left uh, facing UAE and Kuwait, United Arab Emirates and Kuwait. Much stronger teams and they stood little chance, losing all games to them. 1994 was a five-team group and they finished last behind Jordan. Uh, in 1998, uh, the group was won by Kazakhstan. Kazakhstan is now in the European Confederation, but at this time they were in the Asian Confederation. Uh, there they finished third behind Iraq, against whom they did manage to score three goals over their two meetings. Uh, it was Iraq, though, uh, who, had, who had handed them their heaviest loss over the three campaigns. That was a, a, a eight nothing drubbing in 1994. So uh, despite some heavy losses uh, up to this point, they were not humiliated uh, in this cup. 2002 saw their first uh, World Cup point, a draw at home with Sri Lanka. Uh, that they were bested by Sri Lanka uh, does show Pakistan to be at the weekend of the fifth tier scale and uh, uh, Sri Lanka is one of the weakest teams in the world, so a bit of a shame to be uh, uh, bested by them. The next two campaigns paired them with teams that they had little chance against. Pakistan lost twice to Kyrgyzstan in 2006, but in 2010 they did earn a draw in the second leg with Iraq. Uh, that is by far their most glorious result, a second-tier team, and it was made more so by being in the away leg. However, uh, we should point out that due to safety concerns, the game was not played in Iraq, but on the neutral ground of Syria. And as we've said before, it also came after a 7 nothing defeat in the home leg. Uh, so a bit of a Pyrrhic victory, uh, uh, Iraq having little to play for in the second leg. 2014 uh, paired them in the preliminary round with uh, competition more at their own level. Uh, they lost to Bangladesh 3-0 in the first leg away, and then once again kind of earned a draw, a Pyrrhic victory in the second leg. Uh, it was the same actually against fourth-tier team Yemen in 2018, uh, losing 3-1 in a somewhat more competitive first leg, but then drawing in the second leg, which didn't uh, didn't help them get past. Um, and 2022, we'll take a closer look at, actually they played uh, Cambodia in the 2022 campaign, so uh, that is relevant to the pairing here. Uh, all in all, Pakistan has earned only four draws in their World Cup history and have yet to experience the joy of advancing from around. Okay, we move on to their uh, Asian Cup history here and uh, the 2019 Asian Cup, the first round of which was the 2018 uh, World Cup, the first two rounds of the World Cup, and we saw that they were knocked out by Yemen uh, even though they managed to tie them in the second leg. So uh, teams knocked out of the Asian Cup early, uh, moved to a 
competition called the Solidarity Cup. And uh, if you're confused by the dates here, uh, the Asian Cup finals are played in 2019, but the uh, qualifying begins a long time before that. Um, so the teams knocked out in the early rounds play the Solidarity Cup in 2016 here, so not long after the preliminary rounds take place. Uh, however, Pakistan withdrew from that uh, Solidarity Cup where they, they would have faced off against uh, basically fifth tier teams, the very weakest team in the region, so might have done well in the competition, but uh, uh, withdrew from it. Uh, that makes the 2021 Local Cup, the uh, South Asian Football Federation, SAF Cup, their next competition in 2021. But uh, as we've mentioned, they were uh, disqualified uh, or they were under a FIFA suspension um, for about a year from April 2021 to June 2022. So they were not allowed to take part in that cup. That makes the 2022 World Cup their next campaign. And uh, as we mentioned in there, they faced Cambodia, who they face here in the first round, and they lost both legs to them. So once again, uh, knocked out in the uh, preliminary round there. Uh, the 2023 SAF Cup, again, uh, the local cup, was their next competition, and that took place in 2023. And uh, they were a bit out of their depth in the group stage there. Uh, they lost 4 nothing to India and to invited guest Kuwait. So their best chance for points was against Nepal in the third game. But Nepal has been proving a stronger team in recent times, especially uh, so Nepal won that game. Pakistan finished last in the group stage. So uh, Asian Cup 2023, the first two rounds of which were the 2022 World Cup. And we saw they were knocked out by Cambodia, uh, losing both legs in the preliminary round. So uh, once again, they go to the Solidarity Cup, uh, the competition. Uh, it, it's kind of a, uh, it's kind of a, Revi uh, a kind of a revision, a revised version of the Challenge Cup. It's specifically, though, for teams knocked out early in Asian Cup qualifying. And so uh, it's it's pretty weak teams uh, in that competition. Uh, the Solidarity Cup in 2022 was cancelled due to COVID. So once again, Pakistan lost the opportunity to play in it. And uh, that brings us to the end of the uh, history section. And so now we turn to part three, which is where we analyze the uh, uh, two teams and try to predict who is going to advance. So we'll look at the pots first. And we see that Cambodia comes from the bottom of pot one. There are 10 teams in each pot. So Cambodia is the 10th or the weakest team in pot one. However, uh, Pakistan is also from the bottom of their pot. Uh, they are uh, eighth out of ten in their pot. So uh, uh, this is a pretty uh, low level uh, preliminary. Uh, in terms of Asian rankings, Cambodia is 36 and Pakistan is 44. And in FIFA rankings, uh, that translates to Cambodia at 176 and Pakistan at 201, so 25 points behind. However, the ELO rankings, which we tend to trust a bit more, uh, have them much closer, Cambodia 203rd and Pakistan 208th, so just five points uh, behind there. Uh, the FIFA rankings also give some indication of their strengthening or weakening over time. And uh, back in June 2014, Cambodia was uh, 190th, and they've risen. They actually r rose up to uh, 166 in, in June of 2018, and then dropped back down to 176. But I would say uh, overall the trend is uh, Cambodia is looking a bit more competitive than they were in the past. Pakistan, on the other hand, has remained at the same level, uh, uh, below 200, uh, but actually quite consistently between 210 and 200. 
uh, for quite some time. And that's my impression too, that they haven't really uh, changed much over the years. All right, that's the rankings. And now let's look at the head to head. And they've played three times. Uh, one of them was in 1968, so uh, not that relevant. Uh, Khmer Republic won one nothing in that game, so it was competitive, but uh, too long ago to be relevant. But the next one is very relevant. We saw that they were paired in the preliminary round of 2022 World Cup qualifying, and we saw that uh, uh, Cambodia won both legs. Now, the results were... Uh, reasonably competitive. Uh, Cambodia won 2 1 in the home leg and 2 1 in the away leg. Sorry, 2 0 in the home leg, 2 1 in the away leg. So uh, it does leave room for Pakistan being uh, competitive in this campaign. Uh, and we'll, we'll talk a bit more about that when we discuss their chances. Uh, we do have the odds, but we only have the odds for the first game. Uh, where Cambodia is at home. And uh, the odds makers give Cambodia a 58% chance of winning at home and a 21% chance for Pakistan. Once again, we won't uh, get into the math of why that doesn't add up to 100%. Uh, but it does show Cambodia uh, favorites. Well, and naturally, they would be strong favorites at home. I would dare to say that the odds makers uh, would have Cambodia maybe 10% above Pakistan uh, overall for the uh, for the both games, um, but certainly uh, Cambodia is likely to win at home. So it could be another situation where uh, you know Cambodia kind of wraps things up in the first leg, and Pakistan get a tie uh, or something in the second leg. Um, yeah, okay, so uh, let's move on to then uh, finish with a discussion of their chances. Uh, I, I wanted to go back actually to look at, uh, maybe start the discussion to whether I favor the FIFA rankings, which have Pakistan 25 points behind, or the ELO ranking where uh, Pakistan are just five points behind. And my own thinking is uh, that the FIFA rankings are more accurate in this case, uh, even though we usually favor the ELO rankings. I think Cambodia is significantly stronger, uh, winning both games in the preliminary round in 2022 uh, uh, is pretty clear evidence. And Pakistan really haven't shown uh, improvement since then. So I think the result is gonna be uh, quite uh, similar. Pakistan, uh, they're both fifth-tier teams, but I think Pakistan is at the lower end of that scale, while Cambodia is in the middle of that scale. And uh, Cambodia has been becoming more consistent over fifth-tier teams uh, uh, recently, whereas Pakistan, even though they have showed competitiveness at times with fifth-tier teams, uh, I think they uh, tend to get beaten more often than they win. Well, I think there is some possibility that uh, uh, Pakistan can um, uh, put forward a good uh, performance and challenge here. Uh, but I think that would be a surprise. Uh, Cambodia seems the much more likely. Okay, well, that brings us to the end of set five, Cambodia versus Pakistan. And we look forward to meeting you when we look at our next set. That is set six, Hong Kong versus Bhutan. We would like to thank Pixabay and Amaxi for the use of the music in this series titled Caledon or Caledon Flute Beat.